On behalf of Lieutenant Colonel Tyler L. Jones, the Professor of Military Science at Providence College, I welcome you to the 2020 Patriot Battalion Army ROTC Commissioning Ceremony. Before we begin the ceremony, I would like to take a moment to recognize our distinguished guests joining us today on Zoom. Major General Christopher Callahan, Adjutant General for the State of Rhode Island and Commanding General of the Rhode Island National Guard. Captain United States Coast Guard retired, Glenn Sell Macy, Bryan University Provost and Chief Academic Officer. Dr. Ronald Martell, Johnson & Wales University Vice President and Dean of Students. Dr. Shannon Finning, University of Massachusetts Dartmouth, Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs. Kimberly Moulet, Brown University Program Director for the Office of Military Affiliated Students. And Dr. Sue Perlmutter, Rhode Island College Program Director for the Office of Military Affiliated Students. Thank you for being with us today and thank you for your continued support of our cadets in the Patriot Battalion. Please stand for the national anthem and remain standing for the invocation and welcome by Father Shanley. We put ourselves in the presence of our God and we begin in prayer. We thank you, God, for this day that you have given us and especially for this occasion that brings us together as we celebrate the accomplishments of our cadets. We thank you for the energy and commitment that it took for them to complete this task. We thank you for their family members and friends who provided the support and encouragement these graduates needed to finish their work. And we thank you for their professors, their advisors, and everyone who has helped them through this course of study. We ask you to bless all of our cadets, give them the strength, courage, and wisdom they need for the assignments that they will enter into now. Keep each of them safe, both in and out of harm's way, and remind them that they defend and represent the freedom that has been won for us by past generations of men and women in uniform. We ask your blessing upon all of us on this day and may this ceremony deepen in us our own courage and commitment to be true to the task that you ask us. And we ask this of you who live and reign forever and ever, amen. You can sit down now. <laughs> uh, first of all, um, I'd like to uh, congratulate you on your accomplishments. And um, I'd also like to say I'm really sorry that we're doing it this way. Uh, I look forward to this ceremony every year. It's my favorite part of graduation weekend, and I regret that you don't have the experience that you would normally have. In this time, that strange time of pandemic that we live in, 
one of the things that has emerged as maybe the, the crown jewel of a silver lining in all this is the extraordinary courage that we have witnessed in the people on the front lines of the fight against the pandemic. And I mean the doctors, the nurses, hospital personnel, first responders. There's an incredible amount of courage that they have. And if you listen to them speak and read interviews with them, one of the things that they will tell you is that they're afraid. They're afraid of catching the disease. They're afraid of bringing it home to their families. And this is a reminder of something that Aristotle taught a long time ago, that courage is not fearlessness. You should fear the things that are worth fearing. But what courage does is it enables you to go forward and not be paralyzed by fear. And the ability to, fear, to feel fear in the right amount, in the right time, in the right way is a part of courage. And I think that is something we can all learn from these people and something that I'm sure you've learned already. The Army doesn't ask you to be fearless. It asks you to be courageous. And that means being able to go forward when you need to, even though you feel fear. The second thing that I think is important about courage, which is the virtue you need now and that the world needs now, is that courage is connected with having the right values. You have to go after what is truly good in order to be courageous. Somebody who blows up a hospital in a suicide bombing attack is not courageous. You need to know what's worth fighting for what's worth overcoming your fears to accomplish and to do. And that means you need good ethical values. And that's been an important part of your education here at the program at Providence College and the Patriot Battalion. We've taught you what is worth fighting for so that you can go forward even if you feel afraid because you know what you're doing is the right thing to do. And my hope and my prayer for you guys as you go forward from this day is that you will find that courage that these first responders and medical personnel have found, that you'll find it within you because you know what is right to overcome your fears, move forward, and do the right thing. We need your courage in our world right now, and I believe we've educated you for that. So be confident as you go forth that you will find within you, as these people have found within them, the courage that your officers, your classmates, your teachers, everybody that's gonna be teaching you on, on the road ahead of you, that you will find the courage that you need when the time comes. That's my hope and that's my prayer and that's my confidence because I know you've been well educated. So go forth and be courageous. That's it. <laughs> Thank you, Father Shanley. Please be seated. And now it gives me great pleasure to introduce the official party of today's ceremony. Father Brian J. Shanley, the president of Providence College. Lieutenant Colonel retired Christopher W. Wingate, our guest speaker. Lieutenant Colonel Tyler Jones, the Professor of Military Science of the Patriot Battalion at Providence College. Master Sergeant Richard Foist, Senior Military Instructor at Providence College. And lastly, we have Father Iriarte Andujar, the official chaplain for the Patriot Battalion. Ladies and gentlemen, the Providence College Professor of Military Science, Lieutenant Colonel Tyler Jones. Thank you, Major Ricky. Cadets, family members, friends of the Patriot Battalion, and distinguished guests, thank you for joining us today for this virtual ceremony. Major John Callahan, Father Shanley, Provost Solmacy, Dr. Finning, Dr. Martell, Dr. Perlmutter, Ms. Millette, 
Father Ariarte, and Colonel Todi, who is watching us on live stream. Thank you for attending, and thank you for your steadfast support of our program and these outstanding cadets that are before us today. To our commissioning cadets, congratulations. It's been an interesting year, but you all have risen to the challenge and have arrived at the finish line. Well done. As you close the chapter in your ROTC career, you now embark on a new one. In the words of Sergeant Major Tyrannis, the former Cadet Command Sergeant Major, who shared some time with us this year, don't be average, be the leader you want to be led by. How can you apply this? Well, here's my challenge, some practical ways from my experience. First, be humble. Don't brag about yourself, especially not in front of your soldiers. Second, get your hands dirty and be a servant leader. Get in the mix with your soldiers doing the things that others may not want to do. Be it maintenance, digging fighting positions, or filing paperwork. Show everyone that you are not too important for any task. Just being present with them will show them you care. Third, always work to improve yourself, physically, spiritually, emotionally, professionally. Be this by reading, training, tackling the difficult task, or just taking time to maintain balance. Keep improving your foxhole. Fourth, live a life of integrity. Both in and out of uniform, be that consummate professional whose word is their bond and can, who can be trusted with any task. Our profession relies on trust, and that trust is founded on never having to question another soldier's word. Lastly, have fun. You are about to embark on a new adventure. Make the most of each and every day, no matter what that day may bring. Well, enough from me. There is another here who knows you well and who you haven't been forced to listen to all year long. It is my distinct pleasure to welcome back Lieutenant Colonel retired Christopher Wingate. Lieutenant Colonel Wingate retired from the U.S. Army in 2019 after 22 years of service as an active duty Army Aviation, Avi, Army Aviation officer. Lieutenant Colonel Wingate now resides in his hometown of Madison, Virginia, where he teaches leadership and history and lives on a small farm with his wife, Bethany, and his four children. Colonel Wingate was commissioned as, an officer, as a second lieutenant in 1997 through ROTC and was branched as an Army aviator. After flight school, he joined the UH-60 Black Hawk community. During his 22-year career, he served in numerous positions at, echelon, at, at all echelons and completed multiple overseas tours. His last tour of duty was as the professor of military science of this great program. Lieutenant Colonel Wingate is a decorated veteran who we are honored to have with us today. Lieutenant Colonel Wingate, thanks again for joining us. The floor is yours. Thanks, uh, Tyler, very much. Good afternoon. Um, it is great to, uh, to see everybody. As, uh, as Father Shanley said, it, um, it's a little bit sad not to be doing this in person. Um, looking forward to it for a long time, but I am grateful for this strange technology called Zoom that allows us to do this. Um, but congratulations to the cadets, um, to the families. What a great day and what a great accomplishment. Uh, I'm very proud of each of you, and I, I count myself blessed to have been part of your journey to this really great and important milestone today. Um, I'm thankful for to be able to be here today. You know, the, the ROTC model is a very interesting one. Much of the way the Army brings people into the system is focused on quickly bringing people in through a really short and intense experience like boot camp. But that is not the ROTC model at all. The model that you are completing today is built on your long-term commitment and dedication. It takes a long time to become an Army officer through ROTC, four years for most of you. It's a long time. 
that's a lot of physical fitness sessions where you force yourself out of bed at, at 5.30 in the morning, maybe earlier for you, Bryant and UMass Dartmouth students who made the trek to PC. Hours of military doctrine and history lectures from Colonel Jones, Majors Ricky and Jenkins, Master Sergeant Foist, Vance Sergeant Major Fortunato, may he rest in peace. Lots of wandering along about the woods, blaming your compass when you got lost. Lots of shaking your rifle when you couldn't understand why it won't shoot straight. Hours, I made my favorite, hours of blaming the University of Rhode Island cadre and cadets for how bad joint FTX was. And the many, many hours of counseling the freshman cadets for things you would never, ever, ever have done just several years ago. But really and truly, you really can't fake commitment for four years and you're each to be commended for your willingness to take on that tremendous challenge. And today, you, uh, you are rightly proud and your family is rightly proud to have conquered that challenge and earned the title of United States Army Officer. That is truly awesome. I wish we were together so I could shake your hand and look you in the eye and tell you how proud I am. And I know the whole Patriot Battalion community is of you and your accomplishments and your example that really does resound throughout the community. But I, despite the fact that we're on this strange Zoom thing, I do rejoice with you and your families and friends. Congratulations to you. I'll be brief, sort of brief. Yeah. Um, before I, I start, I do want to thank Colonel Jones for inviting me to give these remarks. I've been looking forward to walking the beautiful PC campus again um, for this event. Uh, like so many things in life, you don't realize how beautiful a place is, a special place is until you leave it, and PC is a special place. Um, and I've, I've, missed, I've missed being there. Um, but uh, it is great that this is happening on time. Um, the date's scheduled for it. And I thank the ROTC cadre and Colonel Jones and the whole staff for their great professionalism and dedication that was indispensable um, in these cadets reaching this point today. Ms. Trelano and Ms. Falvo, the NCOs and officers of the program, thank you for your superb example and your dedication to these cadets. I, uh, I do miss you all. Thanks also to Father Shanley and all the PC community. Uh, you provide fantastic support and leadership and the program is very lucky to be part of the PC community. I do, as, uh, as Colonel Jones did, I want to provide a quick uh, charge to you. I won't be as short-winded as Colonel Jones is. I'm sorry for you all. Uh, I did whittle my list down of things I want to talk about, so just four items. Um, so be grateful. This isn't, don't, it's not too long. And I hope maybe you'll take some of this with you as you go out to, to lead American soldiers and really start your life as a really and truly grown-up American uh, post-college life. Uh, first, uh, number one, I put this up front because it's probably the most important and because this lesson comes from a child's book where so much wisdom can be found. Some of you may have heard this, I may tell this to you before. My five-year-old little girl's, um, Sally Josephine's favorite book is called Pickles the Fire Cat. And Pickles is a cat who wants to do big things. Uh, first, Pickles does that by terrorizing the neighborhood. He's a neighborhood bully and he chases kittens up trees where he can't get down. But through the mentorship of a kind lady next door, he becomes a fire cat and becomes useful and an admired institution at the local fire station where he is welcomed and he finds fulfillment and joy there. And I think Pickles is a really good role model for each one of us. I would uh, remind each one of us that we are on, only each given one life. Remember that. And so it makes sense to do something profound with that one chance we have. Don't waste it. Do something big with your life. Anybody, any of us can be mediocre or worse. Don't settle for that. Be great. There are lots of ways to be great. Find an area where duty calls you or that excites you, that you're passionate about. Pursue greatness in that area with your whole heart and your whole mind and your whole soul. Be a great son or daughter. Be a great husband or wife. Be a great father or mother. Be a great friend or a great platoon leader or a great manager. Be a great businesswoman or businessman. Be a great pilot or intelligence analyst or engineer. Be a great child of God. You decide, but be great in some way. Don't let your life slip away without finding that joy and fulfillment of pursuing excellence in some field that you're excited about. Time passes by so quickly. You probably don't believe me now, but it will. Don't risk looking back on your life in 60 years and wishing you had pursued excellence more intently. Number two, be cheerful and grateful, especially when it is hardest to do so. To illustrate the importance of this, I'll tell you a quick story about when I was a lieutenant on a rainy night. Um, it kind of reminds me of that night when we were together at Joint Base Cape Cod, I think two years ago, on a joint FTX with a URI and it was cold and rainy, so we found those metal huts to sleep in, if you remember that. I think it was the FTX where it poured down so hard that your land nav maps turned to pulp. I think that excuse might be the only way you pass land nav that day. 
Anyway, I'll tell you about that miserable day in the Army when I learned from it. I was a brand new lieutenant. I'm not a brand lieutenant. I've been a lieutenant for two years. I'm a lieutenant in the 101st Airborne Division. We were conducting a war game exercise in Fort Polk, Louisiana. We flew down from Fort Campbell in a flight of five helicopters um, and arrived at our campsite around dusk. It was a long flight, maybe eight hours, and we were all, we were all tired. We were unsure where to land. The, the uh, land was a mark like we were expecting. So we hovered around trying to find the right place to land. Finally, I, I was in charge of the flight. I decided to land in a field next to a big tent, thinking they might be able to tell us where to go. Unfortunately, we ended up blowing over three porta potties that we hadn't seen, resulting in about, it seemed like 10 sergeant majors running out screaming at us. It also included one of the porta potties tipping over had a guy in it. <laughs> After a long delay with lots of unfriendly drama, we, uh, we got back in, we hovered over to the right area and it parked. As we parked, it started to rain heavily as we unpacked our bags that we had hoped that it would stay dry since we were there for 30 days and have all our dry clothes. We got our two person tent set up, but I quickly discovered that mine had several holes in it. And I soon had water puddling in my cot and on my bags. It was about midnight now and I was about to go to sleep. A, uh, a fellow Lieutenant put his head in the tent flap and asked if he could talk to me. He was whispering so that my company commander who I was with wouldn't hear me, so I knew it was bad news. I went outside. He told me he had lost his nine millimeter pistol. Now it was almost midnight. It was pouring down rain both inside and outside my tent, and my company commander is already mad at me for blowing down the port of pies at the brigade headquarters, and now a fellow lieutenant told me he couldn't find his weapon. Muttering under my breath, I put my wet boots back on and went outside. For two hours, looked all around, helicopters and the grass and the tent, everywhere we could look, but no luck. Finally knew I had to report the loss. So as a senior lieutenant, I dutifully woke up my already angry commander and told him the bad news. He screamed at me. I am still not sure why it was my fault, but he screamed at me um, and told me to wake everybody up and look for the weapon together. So I did, and lots of more angry grumbling from all the soldiers. Again, they seemed to think it was my fault for waking them up. Finally, at four in the morning, after lots of aimless wandering about, my fellow lieutenant looked in his duffel bag and found his weapon. So I, after all that, I walked over with my company commander, who still was angry, grousing and griping the whole way to the battalion commander's tent to tell him the good news. And there in that tent, after being with a lot of grumpy people, we were greeted by another captain who I knew somewhat, not really well, who alone of all the people there that night had a smile on his face and was cheerful throughout the debacle. He laughed at the whole thing, focusing me on how this was only a little thing and we might be grateful we had found the weapon before the brigade commander found out about it. His attitude, unlike my company commander, was grateful and cheerful in the midst of a very, very long and frustrating night. I was really struck by that, and by the way, his attitude filled me with a similar positive outlook. I resolved then to try to always follow this example. I wasn't always successful, you, you all may remember that, but I truly believe the leader who is cheerful and grateful, he sets a powerful, invigorating, and fruitful example to others. Unfortunately, though, in the same way, the leader that gripes and complains and accuses also sets a powerful example. But in this case, it's demotivating and damaging. You all surely experienced this at CST, where you knew the cheerful kendoers and the dreary complainers. So I urge you to think about that a little bit and pledge right now to be a cheerful and grateful leader. Your soldiers, comrades, and colleagues will appreciate it, and your miss mission will surely prosper for it. Number three, love your soldiers but do it with a tough love. I have a prediction for you. If you don't learn to love your soldiers, you are not going to enjoy being an army officer. Love them, and this experience you are embarking on will be one of joy and fulfillment. There's a really profound connection between love and enjoyment. I discovered it in part as an army officer. I've also discovered as a father of four young children. You all cadets know the older ones. In fact, Bobby and Clara, my two oldest, beat some of you on our jogs around campus sometimes. But uh, parenthood is tough in many ways. The idea of sleeping in, unrushed date nights, personal time, quiet conversations, total focus on a ball game or a hobby or things of the past when you have young children, as all you proud parents know who are listening today. But it really is true, I don't think that anybody but a parent may understand this, that all those things pale in comparison to the absolute joy of being with your children and of helping them and watching them grow. So similarly, love your soldiers and they will bring you joy in this profession that you have chosen. Surely they will do silly and crazy things, frustrating things, but let your love for them overcome this natural frustration. To do this, you must get to know them. 
as Colonel Jones said, get your hands dirty with them, spend time with them, listen to them as individuals with God-given talents and worth. That's a big part of your job as an army officer. Try to develop a tender heart to them. This will really help you to be patient and understanding, which you'll surely need. But, this is a big but, remember you're not a social worker. You're an army officer. You have to balance your love for your soldiers with the commitment to mission accomplishment. That means your soldiers have to be tough. Ask a lot of them, demand adherence to high standards. If you don't do this and take your soldiers into combat, you will have sorely and seriously failed your duty because you'll put the soldiers and the mission at great risk. So love your soldiers with a tough love and you will enjoy them immensely and you'll make the high calling of an army officer. Last, finally, yep, number four, last one. It's kind of practical. Find a mentor and be a mentor. The power of mentorship is profound and I urge you to spend some time thinking about who you would like to mentor you and why and how. There's a great line in a poem I read a long time ago that has stuck with me for a long time. It proclaims the enduring power on a person of, quote, the men I have chosen for my fathers, the men I have chosen for my fathers, unquote. I love that idea. And I've collected portraits of five or six people that are my office that I've chosen as examples in my life. I think this idea is worth thinking seriously and hard about. Who do you want to emulate in your life? If the person is dead or famous and you can't seek personal mentorship, do it from afar by studying their lives. Get to know them through their writings so that when you are faced with a situation, their example and wisdom, successes and failures can provide illumination. If the person is alive and available to you, ask them to mentor you. People want to be mentors. Don't be shy about asking them to do so. <clears throat> a good mentor can provide practical career advice, which is always good, but more importantly, provides accountability and guidance as you navigate challenges of life and of being an army officer. One little caveat to this, um, piece of mentorship, go out this week and get a notebook. Maybe one of those ever-present Army Green notebooks we all have, right on the front, favorite quotes. When you come across a quote or verse or line that means something to you, write it down. I promise you that you will come to treasure that collection as you grow older. In a way, this notebook will become a kind of mentor to you. Similarly, be ready to mentor others. It's a truly fulfilling role. Perhaps no other role that I experienced as an Army officer was as fulfilling. Mentor your soldiers and you'll reap a rich harvest from them. All right, I think I've gone on long enough. I want to leave you with a quote from George Washington, who was, I think, the one truly indispensable American, certainly the one indispensable American soldier. He told his officers during the Revolutionary War that, quote, remember that it is the actions and not the commission that make the officer and that there is more expected from him than his title, end quote. Today, you are earning a wonderful, impressive, and influential title. You will be respected and admired because of your new title, the United States Army Officer. More important though, today you take on a new and tremendous responsibility. You are now expected to be a leader full of courage, as Father Shanley said, and selfless service, with unquestionable integrity and trustworthiness, dedicated to your soldiers and to the mission. Never forget that. Never stop striving to be great at these things. Never forget that you are an army officer, fully prepared to lead American soldiers wherever the mission sends you. Congratulations again. I really am proud of each and every one of you and all to all the families gathered on Zoom today. Thank you to their families for your indispensable support to this mission. I wish you all the very, very best. I hope and pray that I'll see you in person soon to congratulate you and shake your hand, look you in the eye. God bless each one of you as you now become the Army's newest officers. Thank you very much. Thank you, Colonel Wingate. So it's, it's my distinct pleasure now to, to begin the process of the oath. Since 1775, more than 42 million Americans have raised their right hand to take an oath making America's military what it is, the premier fighting force in the world and a valued-based institution closely bound to our nation and its people. They have taken that oath not to a king or a particular politician, but to our Constitution. This oath and the commission of a military officer is a visible symbol of their commitment 
and the faith entrusted to them by the people of this great nation. There exists no other profession in our society where such totality of obligation is expressed in terms so simple yet so profound. Since the cold winter of Valley Forge to our current worldwide commitments, our nation has entrusted its youth and treasure to the men and women who hold commissions as officers in the armed forces. Today, 17 graduates will stand, raise their right hand, and take an oath as a commissioned officer in the United States Army. One who's graduating is fully qualified, but is awaiting a, a medical clearance. Pending the results, Cadet Dan Willis will conduct his oath ceremony uh, during a separate commissioning ceremony. At this time, I would ask the commissioning class of 2020 to please stand for the commissioning oath of office. Give you a show. Yeah. Me. Please raise your right hand. Aye. State your name. Aye. I am Marvin Salazar. Having been appointed an officer. Having been appointed an officer. In the Army of the United States. In the Army of the United States. In the grade of second lieutenant. In the second lieutenant. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear that I will support and defend. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. I bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Personal evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge. I will well and respectfully discharge. The duties of the office. The duties of the office. Upon which I'm about to enter. Upon which I'm about to enter. So help me God. Help me God. Help me God. Congratulations. Thank you, Lieutenant Colonel Jones. All National Guard second lieutenants remain standing. All others, please be seated. Right now, would you take the oath? <laughs> if you're not participating in the National Guard oath, go ahead and mute. mute Excuse me, mute your microphones, please. I will now administer the state oath I'm here. to the National Guard lieutenants. What did you say? No, no, not me. National Guard lieutenants, please raise your right hand. I state your name. I, Marvin Salazar. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of Rhode Island and Providence Plantations, and the Constitution of the State of Rhode Island and Providence Plantations, against all enemies, foreign and domestic, against, against all enemies, enemies foreign, and domestic, foreign and domestic, that I bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I will bear, I will true, bear true, true faith and allegiance same. to the same, that I will obey the orders. I will obey the orders of the President of the United States. Of the President of the United States. And of the Governor of the State of Rhode Island and Providence Plantations. And of the Governor of the State of Rhode Island and Providence Plantations. That I make this obligation freely. 
And I make this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any, any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. That I will well and faithfully discharge. I will well and faithfully discharge. The duties of the office of second lieutenant. The duties, the duties of the office of second, second lieutenant. In the Army National Guard. In the, in the Army, Army National, National Guard. Guard. Of the state of Rhode Island and Providence Plantations. Of the state of Rhode Island and Providence Plantations. Upon which I am about to enter. Upon which I'm about to enter. So help me God. So help me, so God. Help me God. Lieutenants, please take your seats. During the final year as cadets, following their branching, each commissionee is allowed to wear their branch insignia on their Army service uniform. Each of the commissionees has the rank covered with the felt that is the same color as their branch. Today, each officer has the felt removed as they officially become second lieutenants in the United States Army. The lieutenants will then move to conduct their first salute. Since ancient times, men in arms have rendered some form of salute as an exchange of greetings. The method of saluting has varied throughout the ages as it still varies in form between different armies today. Yet, whatever the form, the salute pertains to military personnel and its use is restricted to those in good standing. The military salute is today, as it has been for ages, a unique exchange of greetings and respect between soldiers. The ceremony you're about to witness is a milestone in their careers of these new lieutenants as each is about to receive and return their first salute. It is customary to pass a silver dollar to the soldier who renders an officer their first salute. Due to the current situation, we are unable to observe the silver dollar exchange. Lieutenants, as your name is called, please unmute your microphone and stand and step back into the view of the camera and have your felt removed to be officially commissioned as second lieutenants in the United States Army. Second Lieutenant Caitlin Almy. Will Second Lieutenant El Jadidi please remove her felt? Caitlin is commissioned into the Corps of Engineers and will attend her basic officer course at Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. Second Lieutenant Almy receives her first salute from Specialist Eduardo Marquez Callas. That's the old man. Second Lieutenant John Paul Bettinelli. Will John Paul's parents please remove his felt? John Paul is commissioned into the aviation branch and will attend his basic officer course at Fort Rucker, Alabama. Second Lieutenant Bettinelli receives his first salute from his grandfather, former PFC John Drury. Second Lieutenant Catherine Carrignan. On behalf of Kat's parents, Bob and Laurel Carrignan, and her brother Jackson, will Kat's friend Cole Tridman please remove her felt? Kat is commissioned in the Corps of Engineers and will attend her basic officer course at Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. Second Lieutenant Carrigan receives her first salute from Master Sergeant Richard Foist. The honor is all mine, ma'am. Thank you, Master. Second Lieutenant Christopher Caswell. Will Christopher's parents, Edward and Carrie, please remove his felt? Chris is commissioned into the Air Defense Artillery Branch and will attend his basic officer course at Fort Sill, Oklahoma. Second Lieutenant Caswell receives his first salute from former Airman Douglas Heck. Second Lieutenant Saeed El Jadidi. Will his parents, Jamal and Kate, please remove his felt? 
Saeed is commissioned into the aviation branch and will attend his basic officer course at Fort Rucker, Alabama. Second Lieutenant El Jadidi receives his first salute from Specialist Eduardo Marquez Callas. Win your war, sir. Above the best, Eddie. Second Lieutenant Jared Getgano. Will Jared's parents, Ayn and Conchita Getgano, please remove his felt? Jared is commissioned into the Medical Services Corps and will attend his basic officer course at Fort Sam Houston, Texas. Second, Le Second Lieutenant Gitgano receives his first salute from former specialist Ayn Gitgano. Second Lieutenant Madeline Gonzalez. On behalf of Maddie's parents, George and Barbie Gonzalez, Will Second Lieutenant Michael Meyer please remove her felt? Maddie is commissioned into the Medical Services Corps and will attend her basic officer course at Fort Sam Houston, Texas. Second Lieutenant Gonzalez receives her first salute from her grandfather, former Technical Sergeant Roy Anderson. The honor is all mine, ma'am. Second Lieutenant John Kohler. Will his mother Tammy Furlan Kohler and his grandmother Lorraine Furlan please remove his felt? John is commissioned into the aviation branch and will attend his basic officer course at Fort Rucker, Alabama. Second Lieutenant Kohler receives his first salute from his grandfather, retired Sergeant First Class Paul Furland. <laughs> Second Lieutenant Anthony Kolodicek. Will his parents Matthew and Kim Kolodicek please remove his felt? Anthony is commissioned into the Medical Services Corps and will attend his basic officer course at Fort Sam Houston, Texas. Second Lieutenant Kolodicek receives his first salute from Master Sergeant Richard Foist. The privilege is all mine, sir. Thank you, Master Sergeant. Second Lieutenant Zachary Mason. Will his parents, Mike and Nora Mason, please remove his felt? Zach is commissioned into the Air Defense Artillery Branch and will attend his basic officer course at Fort Sill, Oklahoma. Second Lieutenant Mason receives his first salute from his brother, Cadet Samuel Mason. Privilege is all mine, sir. There we go. Second Lieutenant Robert McClellan. Will his parents, Rob and Stephanie McClellan, please remove his felt? Rob is commissioned into the Corps of Engineers and will attend his basic officer course at Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. Second Lieutenant McClellan receives his first salute from PFC, Sean Braga. Please lead the way, sir. Thank you, Braggs. Second Lieutenant Kyle Newton. Will his parents Carl and Suzanne Newton please remove his felt? Kyle is commissioned into the infantry branch and will attend his basic officer course at Fort Benning, Georgia. Second Lieutenant Newton receives his first salute from Master Sergeant Richard Foist. The honor is all mine, sir. Thank you, Master Sergeant. Oh. Second Lieutenant Jacob Olson. Will his mother Kimberly Olson and grandfather Mike Olson please remove his felt? 
Jacob is commissioned into the military police corps. However, he is branch detailed to the infantry branch and will attend his basic officer course at Fort Benning, Georgia. Second Lieutenant Olson receives his first salute from his father, Master Sergeant Scott Olson. Second Lieutenant Elliot Pollock. Will his, his parents, Mark and Stephanie Pollock, please remove his felt. Elliot is commissioned into the field artillery branch and will attend his basic officer course at Fort Sill, Oklahoma. Second Lieutenant Pollock receives his first salute from Seaman Apprentice Owen Hurley. Boom, sir. Okay, Second Lieutenant Marvin Salazar. Will his parents Marvin and Gilma Salazar please remove his felt? Marvin is commissioned into the military intelligence branch and will attend his basic officer course at Fort Huachuca, Arizona. Second Lieutenant Salazar receives his first salute from Master Sergeant Richard Foist. The honor is all mine, sir. Thank you, Master Sergeant. Oh. Second Lieutenant Dennis Scannell. Will his parents, Dennis and Donna Vernelli, please remove his felt. Dennis is commissioned into the finance and comptroller branch. However, he is branch detailed to the armor branch and will attend his basic officer course at Fort Benning, Georgia. Second Lieutenant Scannell receives his first salute from his grandfather, former PFC John Varinelli. Second Lieutenant Jason Sullivan. Nice. Will Cadet Willis please remove his felt? Jason is commissioned into the Corps of Engineers and will attend his basic officer course at Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. Second Lieutenant Sullivan receives his first salute from Cadet Willis. Stay on, sir. Stay on. Everyone at this time, please unmute your microphones. Lieutenants, please stand and step back so you are in full view of the camera. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a round of applause in congratulating the Army's newest second lieutenants. This brings the total number of lieutenants commissioned from the Providence College Army ROTC program since 1951 to 1,981. Please be seated. At this time, the spring semester cadet battalion commander, second lieutenant, Kat Carrigan will deliver remarks on behalf of the 2020 commissioning class. Kat. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, cadets of the Patri Patriot Battalion, <laughs> and my classmates and their families. Perhaps stating the obvious, this moment is bittersweet. Today we achieve a milestone we look to and work towards for four years, but we do so in separate places after an end of our senior year, no one expected. This time serves as a humbling reminder of many things. It reminds me that though the celebrations of achievement feel wonderful, our purpose as officers is not to be celebrated or recognized. It is to lead with humility and to acknowledge constantly the immense responsibility we've been given today. Though I wish I could have accepted the responsibility of this rank with my family present, I know that they're watching and I want to thank them for everything that they've done to get me here today. Being a cadet at Brown is a bit of an oddity. 
there aren't that many of us. My classmate Maddie and I were lucky to have a handful of upperclassmen to look to, each somewhat eccentric, and each handling the reality of commuting between environments in their own unique ways. My first morning of PT, I was told to meet a William Summers in a barber parking lot for a ride down to the PC track. I walked from my dorm and at some point was passed by a huge dude running with a ruck, boots, and shorts on in the direction my Google Maps said to go. William? I arrived at a parking lot to Will stuffing his ruck into the back of a 2002 Subaru Outback, trying to make room in a trunk full of suitcases he never bothered to unpack. Soon Kayla ran in, then Caleb and Maddie, while Will was already cranking a soundtrack I'd become all too familiar with in the next year, Hamilton the Musical. I felt like I was in a scene from Zoolander. These were not the people and this was not the routine I had in mind when I thought army cadets go to training. And the surprise was wonderful. It was those rides, the literal commutes to and from PC that became the highlights of my days freshman year. Always an experience filled with music, catching up, collective complaining, yelling, all backtracked by the assorted smells and sounds of a 2002 outback being slowly ruined by Will's poor navigation of Providence bottles. The cars have changed and the people have graduated, but those were my first important role models in college, showing me that it was possible to be involved in both places, to really like both places for different reasons, and to have a lot of fun while going back and forth. In the last four years, this battalion has been a constant for me. I came into college uncertain of many things, of almost everything. I didn't know what I wanted to study or to branch or what I wanted to invest my time and energy in. I was overwhelmed and I was intimidated. The first few months of PT and labs, I don't think I said a word to anybody in my class. As my indecision increased in my Brown academic career, so too did my focus on improving myself when I went down to Providence College. Hard work felt fruitful in this battalion. The physicality was an outlet and it gave me much needed structure and support when I was faltering. I started to talk more, not a lot, but enough to feel like I had real friendships with the people also on this Zoom call today. It took me a long time to find confidence in myself as an officer, and I only did so because, this patient, because of the patience, tough love, and consistency of my classmates and the battalion cadre. Together, this class has made it through four years of FTXs, Bryant Labs, the good, the bad, and the ugly, countless early mornings, hours in classrooms, hours standing on the grass outside water fire, color guards, military balls, Zoom calls, and so much more. All of that time in training together has formed an undeniable bond between even the most opposite of people in this class. Friendships rooted in being present and being together, in accomplishing goals, in failing and helping each other back up. In every failure, my classmates have been there to pick me up, to make me laugh, and give me the confidence and encouragement to try again. I've learned so much from them, and for that I am grateful. Fall FTX this year demonstrated in so many ways how much we all have grown as we all did our part to execute a successful training event for the underclassmen. It felt like the most prolonged test we'd faced as cadets, as leaders, and together. But we came together to achieve a common goal and we succeeded. I'm proud to have been a part of it and I wish we could have tried again this spring. I'm so grateful that we were able to celebrate at military ball this spring, not only with each other, but with Sergeant Major Fortunato. His loss was as unexpected as the circumstances in which it took place and our hearts hurt not having him with us today. We were so lucky to have him welcome us into the army in the way he did that night. I've had the privilege of spending these quiet quarantine times reflecting on the last four years, my growth and the power of togetherness. I've thought about a lot about what leadership looks, looks like in times of crisis and what type of person is capable of stepping up to show these qualities under stress and duress. For four years, we have been taught the answer to that question by incredibly talented, smart and experienced instructors each of which we are lucky to have learned from and is present today. We would not be ready to take this step without the patience and guidance of the officers and non-commissioned officers working tirelessly to better our program. Thank you to all of you. Thank you too to Ms. Falvo and Ms. Lorraine, two incredibly strong women that I look up to and that have helped us all navigate both our time in the program and our lives. I appreciate all the work you two do and I'll miss the two turned 20 minute conversations in the office. I'm bad at goodbyes, and the distance in this one makes it seem even more insurmountable. But I find a lot of comfort in books. <laughs> and one I circle back to continually is Kirouac's On the Road. 
yes, perhaps his adventures are pretty opposite to anything we'll experience in the next few years. Uh, but Kerouac knew people. I share with you now his sentiment on leaving. What is that feeling when you're driving away from people and they recede on the plane until you see their specks dispersing? It is the two huge world faulting us and it is a goodbye. But we lean forward to the next crazy venture beneath the same skies. And with that, I say thank you to anyone who helped us get here. I'm grateful for the person this program has made me, for my classmates and for the mentorship and so much more. Here's to leaning forward into the next adventure, knowing that we will always have a place to come back to in Providence and people to reconnect with wherever we all make. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lieutenant Carrigan, and uh, they're off camera right now, so nobody can see them. But as you can imagine, uh, Lorraine and Deb are, are both crying right now. So, so great, great job, Cat. You did it. You did it. Well, please stand for the benediction by Father Anduhar. Let us bow our heads. Yeah. Most gracious God, we come to an end of this ceremony and we give you thanks for all that you have given us. We ask your blessing upon the families and friends and various educational communities which have supported the Patriot Battalion and its members, as well as all who serve in our armed forces. Thank you for those who have supported and nurtured the growth and education of our cadets and staff. Bless all who are present here in whatever way that might be, but particularly watch over and bless with your love and protection these newly commissioned officers who will serve in the United States Army. May these new officers serve their commission in accordance with the Army values of loyalty, duty, respect, selfless uh, service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. With understanding and a humble heart, as well as a human heart, guide their serving by word and example, becoming good leaders to those who will be placed under their command. Bless them with wisdom and strength, with competence and faithfulness in their duty to you and our country. Make known your spirit and divine life to them in their daily lives. And may they always rely on your strength, your mercy, and your faithfulness. And we ask this in your name. Amen. Thank you, Father. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the commissioning ceremony for the class of 2020. Thank you, and congratulations again to the new lieutenants. Class of 2020, remember, make good decisions. You are dismissed. Great, congrats all new LTs. Go.